Uh, Baba. Yeah. Is that a is that a dinosaur hanging on our fuzzy dice there? Yes, sir. It is. Can, can you tell me why why that that's for? Well, I found that at a truck stop, and it kind of reminded me of this rig here I'm driving. Well, how how so? You know, the big old dinosaur tail on the back sweeping around knocking Priuses off the highway. You get out of a good wind, that thing's just whipping and pulling and you're hitting brakes, shifting gears, downshifting. I'm telling you, we must have knocked 20 different cars off the road on this trip. <laughs> so I had to get that air freshener. Reminds me of it. You're, are, you, are you serious right now? Have we really knocked like 20 people yeah. off the road on this trip? While you were in the back making margaritas and napping them off, <laughs> I've been knocking Priuses off one after another. <laughs> Accidentally. Bubba. <laughs> Bubba, we're going to jail. <laughs> Not me, son. We're going to jail. Uh -uh. You can't. That's like <laughs> vehicular manslaughter, I think. <laughs> Ain't nobody on this planet cares about a Prius driver. <laughs> Riding through the western sky. You can toss your worries aside With the clouds rolling gently And sunshine aplenty On a trail that leads straight into the sky Hear the gentle winds whisper Through the valley to the river For there you're as free as the tumble And we ride into the western sky Hello Internet! Welcome to the JCR RV. I'm here with none other than Jeep and Bubba, who is currently trucking Bubba, and we are headed to California. And we're headed to California because we're gonna wheel the Rubicon Trail. And I'm so stoked to wheel this trail. I've never done it. It's definitely been a bucket list item for me. Bubba has done it before. So Bubba is the veteran here, but we're gonna do this a little differently. We don't have our full film crew, and by full film crew, I mean we don't have Cameron with us this time. So I'm gonna shoot it myself. I'm gonna shoot it selfie style. We're gonna shoot it with cell phone. We're just going to have a great time and show you some awesome wheeling kind of behind the scenes on the Rubicon Trail. So let's get going. Get you some of that. <laughs> I'm cutting that because it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Bubba. Uh, what are you doing, Daryl? Well, I'm rolling this blown ass off the trailer tire <laughs> across the parking lot of this TA. <laughs> And uh, it's going real good. Super fun. You have a long way to go. Yeah. We could have just dropped it off with the trailer, but we <laughs> ran out of parking spot, so I didn't want to delay parking. It was a bad choice. Uh huh. That was a bad choice. <laughs> so, you know, this is just life. This is part for the course of life on the road for me. You know what? Just pulling a janky ass trailer tire. Across the TA at what, like midnight right now? Yeah, it's like midnight Michigan time. We've been driving since 8 o'clock, 8 a.m., four yeah. states, hundreds of miles. You know, everyone says, you guys are so lucky. You guys lead <laughs> the best life. Yep. Here it is. <laughs> Why'd this thing blow up anyways? It's a freaking 19 and a half semi truck tire. I don't, I don't know, I don't know, yeah. You were driving. I was driving. It's your fault. Oh, it's so close. You know, you can put the camera down and help me roll. I don't have any gloves. And I'm, I'm gonna get some Taco Bell. <laughs> Did I mention that it's 7,500 feet where we're at right now? Oh no, you didn't mention we're 7,500 feet elevation. Air's kind of thin. You're doing a great job. I know. You're doing God's work, Daryl. <laughs> Way to go, Daryl. <laughs> By the way, folks, this was the idea. I, I tried to get him to um, let me drop him off right there. He said, no, we'll just roll it over. Just to give you, uh, for instance, we're parked right there. 
Oh, it's Taco Bell time. So hello, we drove all day. We are now in West, when, I don't know, we're in Nevada, like right over, like a mile in Nevada, and we went to a casino. And Bubba won. Show him, show him that stack. So was that $26? That's right. How much uh, How much did you spend to win $26? $25. $25. Um, I lost $5, but I won two Jack and Cokes. <laughs> so, I mean, really, you can't go wrong. Can't go You're wrong. up. You're up two Jack and Cokes yeah. and a dollar. Yeah. Man. It's 66 cents. Yeah, we need to go to bed. We're yeah. 500 miles from Georgetown, so it's sleepy time. Bye. See ya. Night, everyone. In the city. City of Compton, keep it rockin', keep it rockin'. I don't, I don't know yeah, the that's it. it. Hey everybody, Bubba here, and we just rolled into Georgetown, California, where we're going to be staying for the next day. We have a show here tomorrow, and then headed to the trail on Thursday and this is where we're going to be glamping staying for the next two nights there's uh, some other industry people over there and we're within walking distance of downtown uh, Georgetown let me uh, flip it around and show you what Daryl's up to beautiful Crusader fresh off the trailer oh, oh hey hey, hey Daryl what are, we, what are we doing? In typical fashion, fixing things as soon as we get somewhere. Huh. The uh, generator stopped running, I don't know, about eight hours ago. Said it was overheating, so we're trying to get to the uh, radiator cap, but that means we got to take like everything apart. I think we have to take the whole like RV chassis off the frame to get to this. So. <laughs> that sounds like... <laughs> I've got beer. It sounds like uh, we have a lot of work to do, and... You didn't waste any time after getting off those 11% grade roads no. and switchbacks for the last oh, two hours that you've been driving. That was the sketchiest. That was the sketchiest driving I've ever had the pleasure. If of. we were in your Miata or your motorcycle, oh, it would have yeah, been that great. Been super fun then, but but uh, not in the RV and 28 foot trailer. Well, we'll leave you be. Oh, thanks. I'm gonna get this finished so we can have AC and I can drink more beer. I'm just gonna drink a beer and okay, watch you. Cool. Alrighty, thanks guys. See ya. So for the people at home, now I heard there's free coffee at the trailhead. <laughs> So Bubba and I drove for three days, 2,100 miles. We drove down some sketchy, sketchy roads for the Toter home. We're finally here. We are at the Rubicon Trail. We're going to stage this morning. We're going to air down. We're going to get started. I am super duper excited for this. Bubba, let's roll. Yee! Here you go, Bubba. Got it.
decided that he was going to eat lunch and drive and uh, took some lazy lines. Smokey the bear. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Bubba, once I get garbage in my mouth, now I can't stop. Oh. All right, fine. We're going to do it right now. Let's see. He's not eating this time. So here we are on the Rubicon Trail, day one, and we're halfway down the trail. And so far, Crusader taking it pretty easy. You know, we've had a few things, minor things, we've had to, to tune up and keep going, but Crusader's running great. It's a beautiful day, weather's great. The spotters are fantastic. Daryl's really not making them work that hard, but <laughs> uh, everything's going great. We're having a wonderful time. We're about to get up on Buck Island, and after that, it's the big sluice and then into Rubicon Springs to hopefully get a nice steak dinner and a dip in some cold water. So, we'll be seeing you. Oh, hi Bubba. Hey, are you, are you eating a chicken finger down Big Sluice? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. All right, enjoy. Bye. Good thing we weren't filming. <laughs> Good thing I wasn't filming. 
<laughs> I lost all my manual cool points right yeah. there. Thanks, guys. I just, they heard on the radio they're all out of tequila. What? Yeah. We gotta go home. Pack it up. They only have unalcoholic beer. Pack it up, we're going home. <laughs> we're gonna run a Cadillac tonight or are we taking a helicopter out? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go to Tahoe. <laughs> we're just going right past camp and going straight to Tahoe. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Rubicon Springs. We had an awesome day of wheeling yesterday. We made it in late last night. We had some delicious food, met some awesome people, took a quick bath and then set up camp, but it is really beautiful here. Super beautiful. Let's go over camp real fast. We made, just made some coffee here, which was fun and delicious. I'm currently still drinking it. American Bubba is <laughs> chilling with his medium roast Starbucks. Wonderful. So we decided to go with hammocks because they're just super awesome, easy to set up. Bubba set up rocking there off the front bumper with the rain fly it's not gonna rain but we thought maybe we'd keep sun out and get a couple more hours of sleep this morning it worked yeah it worked we missed breakfast mine said yeah we, we definitely missed <laughs> breakfast <laughs> just going off the cage on crusader bubba's big monster 60 quart cooler back there working pretty well i think the ice is gone but the water in it is still very, yeah, cold. very cold so yeah we're having a great time we're gonna hang out today Meet some new people, maybe go swimming, maybe float on a pizza raft for a while. Together. Float on a pizza raft together. He's gone. Sir, we need to investigate the circumstances of this rollover. <laughs> I think they've all died. Have you been drinking? A lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it's pizza raft time. Where's your pizza raft at, Bubba? I ain't got one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use a log. <laughs> So on the way back from dinner, we noticed that the pizza raft and the nitro love boat were, um, they broke their cords and they were set adrift. So there we have Manatee Bubba, <laughs> who is dragging them like a tugboat. With his mouth. With his mouth. You're doing a great job, Bubba. Doing God's work. <laughs> and I'm just sitting here with my delicious, well, we'll call it root beer, just watching, so. Great job, Bubba. You're a trooper. That's it for us at Rubicon Springs. We're gonna try to bail out of here a little early today, beat the traffic, 
maybe grab a shower in the RV. It's been really fun, but I hear the best obstacles are ahead of us. We have to run Cadillac Hill, so let's get going. Oh, hey, Bubba. So we're about halfway up Cadillac Hill, and man, this is really fun. Big, chunky boulders, super, super rad. I'm excited to see what's farther this way. And I'm very happy that you walked up behind me with that camera. <laughs> <laughs> Standing in a place I didn't think I'd be at for another maybe 10 or 15 years, and that's the top of Cadillac Hill. And it's got to be one of the, I don't know, prettiest places in the United States. All the trail systems, definitely in California. I don't know. There's got a lot of people that are gonna argue with me on that, but they've probably never been to the top of Cadillac Hill. Yeah, it's it's been phenomenal to uh, to be here again and experience this. And um, we just had an awesome run up the hill. Daryl had a lot of fun. Crusader had a lot of fun, no breaks. Now we just gotta bomb down some fire roads and call our wives and tell them we're still alive. <laughs> Thanks for riding with us, folks. Check that view out.
All right. All right, old man American Bubba. Or, or young man Bubba. Call me old glory. <laughs> old glory. <laughs> I think it's about time we switch it up a little bit and we have a conversation. And that conversation is going to be about the Rubicon Trail. Yeah. And you've been here once before. You were here last year. This is my first time here. Um, I've been wheeling for 15 years. So the Rubicon Trail is like one of those iconic trails that everyone says, oh, I want to get to the Rubicon. Oh, I want to get to the Rubicon. And that was definitely something that I've said my entire life. Yep. But I, I definitely had some ideas in my head what the Rubicon Trail was and some ideas of what it wasn't. And I think that it, it has blown away my expectations, let's just put it that way. Um, but I, I wanted to get your thoughts on it. So last year you wheeled it for the first time and kind of what you expected and if it met your expectations or not. Yeah, so last year I couldn't sleep for like two weeks before I got here. I was so anxious to be here, check your gear 80 times. You know, you're just so excited that you're coming, and then you get here, and you're like, I hope I don't break. I hope I don't break. <laughs> I don't know what to expect. It's going to be the, the toughest trail I've ever driven in my life. There's yeah. nothing like this I've ever done before. And then you kind of realize it, it's not the toughest trail, or maybe it's not the toughest obstacles you've ever done in your yeah. life. It's just a system of trails where you got to stay focused all day long, and it just got a lot of fun and it's got a lot of beauty and it's got you know springs and rocks and granite and trees and you're just kind of enraptured in everything that's going on and you're like ah, i just want to capture all this well that's, that's yeah. how i felt too because you know i've definitely i've certainly wheeled harder trails than this but and I, I didn't expect it to be difficult but when i got here i got this sense of man we have to go nine miles before we camp tonight and then we have to go whatever it is five miles out of here we have to make it and we're 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 on a trail system that's so remote that like if you're in Moab and you break down you're maybe three hours or you're two hours from town you're two hours from an auto parts store yeah. here you know we were, were we're an hour from Georgetown before we even start the trail yeah. and who knows if Georgetown has the parts that you need for your vehicle or whatever yeah. so I definitely got this sense of man if we break we're at the mercy of of everyone else here to help us right yeah and so that was definitely but like I said uh, you know I've wheeled harder places before but but this trail was just fun like it was obstacle after obstacle after obstacle and I would say that you could you know you could make it 33's lockers you'd have a great day yeah I think less than that you're gonna be stacking rocks you're gonna get beat up but it's doable I mean Jeep, yeah Jeep brings new vehicles through here yeah all the time but I think that the thing that I didn't and you kind of talked about this but the thing that I didn't understand was this location that we're sitting at right here Rubicon Springs I wasn't sure if it was just like a tiny little like section next to a river where everyone camped or what it was, but yeah, I mean this is amazing. And we sat at, at, at lunch this morning and met an old timer who actually owns part of this this property here. Yep. And I, I didn't I never even knew that story. So I'm super excited to get home and kind of research that story. I actually bought a book that, that <laughs> his son wrote, Rubicon Springs and the Rubicon Trail a history. So I'm super excited to read that. But but the quick and dirty um, short story about this is is this property around Rubicon Springs is owned by a logging company yeah I want to say Bohemian logging. yeah Bohemian yeah. logging company yeah. and they were gonna sell it it was up for sale and um, is this federal land I want to say or uh, the property that surrounds us I think I have county the, land that's the county I think land. I have the the brochure here yeah, the, National the, Forest this is so this is Ta Tahoe and El Dorado National Forest land here and um, and this, this Rubicon Soda Springs group, a group of 16 friends, were in a bidding war uh, to buy this from the Bohemian Logging Company, and they did. And the reason that they bought this property was so that they could preserve it as a camp for people who are running the Rubicon Trail. So yeah, pretty much the road we came in on, a lot of people don't realize it's not it's not all private property, it's, it's, it's a county road. Yeah. It's not even a forestry road, it's, it's a, like a legal county road. Yes. Like you would, you would drive down your normal road to your home, so it's the same way it's used, but the land we're, we're camping on, the springs that we're using, the bathrooms we're using, all the land where dinner served, if, if it wasn't for this group, it wouldn't yeah, exist. Yeah, it wouldn't exist, exactly. So I mean, honestly, the forestry department could have got it, a logging company could have got it, Yeah. And, and we would have no access to it. Exactly. 
So, so the organizations like this and then the Jeepers Jamboree and the Jamborees and the events that come through here will pay a portion to this, this incorporation of 16 shareholders, yeah. I guess, so they can afford to keep this running and that's really, that's fantastic. And that land use stuff, I've, you've seen it across the country where a group has came in and they've yelled about erosion or they've yelled about this or they've yelled about that and they've got trails closed down, you know, Teleco, stuff in Moab, stuff wherever you are locally and and this group of 16 people got together and did something about it and I've got mad respect for that and I'm super excited to learn more about that once I get my Googles back. <laughs> yeah. You know, we you, you get here, you, you and we were talking about it before we came out here, you said, okay, so we will on Thursday and we will on Sunday. Yeah. What are we doing in this yeah, exactly. amount of time? And, I have no idea, right? And you could like swim in the river or hike or whatever but like to we've kind of taken it upon ourselves to be more historians while we're here I mean, <laughs> yeah I mean it's kind of neat because we're here and and JCR is not as large as like we go to an event in Michigan yeah for sure and so it's neat where we can kind of slip in and sit with random people at breakfast and lunch yeah. and just have a conversation and that's this that's been our favorite part of the trip, oh yeah for sure because usually we go somewhere and there's there's so many egos in this industry that you like you can't even sit down and have a conversation with somebody because they're aligned to one brand or some other brand and we're just we're just not like that I mean I want to talk to people and have a good time I want to I want to sit here at, at this beautiful location and just relax and just do what we do so yeah. I'm glad that we got a chance to to do that I think you, you said this morning, it was funny, you said, I'm so proud of this group that's preserved this, we don't even know them. And then we yeah, sort exactly. of, you know, run into some of them, but you know, it's 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 funny that you're just a, a stranger to this area and then you immediately are proud that they've oh yeah the way exactly they preserved it. yeah like I never I never knew the history here and I but I'm just so I'm like you're right it's just so much pride mm -hmm. that they did this and that they maintain this property I mean if you ever run out here there are porta johns uh, up and down this whole trail it's incredible yeah and they raised money to build a, a Unimog sewer sucker yeah. that runs up and down the trail and and maintains all those porta johns and they you know they airlift and supply and and the we Rubicon, were eating in a pavilion yeah. this morning, and they've taken dead wood and made their own lumber mill just so they can have a pavilion, so we can eat underneath it in shade. Yeah, <laughs> I mean yeah. it's things like that. That's that's incredible. Yeah, and, the, and the, like the friends of the Rubicon run expedition trailers and they run supplies in and out of here. Yeah, there has to be 40 trailers in camp. Yeah, that they've run you know, backwards down Cadillac, it's just so we can have yeah. burgers for lunch today. Exactly, and, and not just this event, you know, that, that's amazing they do it for this event, but also for the maintenance of this. There's, there's two live-in caretakers yep. all summer here at this location that make sure that that this property is being well taken care of and well respected. I, I honestly have seen very little trash on the trail. Oh, I haven't seen any, yeah. You know, and um, people really respect it because of the way that the people who own this property take the leadership and initiative to, yeah. to preserve it. We've all been to a trail where uh, whoever runs it doesn't care, and then everyone oh, yeah. else in turn leaves trash or they do fires random places, yeah. and you're just like, you see humanity at its worst, but out here we see it, what how much good it exactly. can do. Exactly. Yeah, so like, I thought that this event was going to be about the trail. Like, I thought it was going to be about the four wheel, like the four wheeling and the yeah, obstacles. The yeah, like it usually is, but it. But it's not. It turned out. It, it turned into an, an overland. I mean, it's an overland trail. It's it a honestly trail. is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, the, the trails. You want to. You want to live the whole day. You want to survive the whole day to get here to set up camp, and you have fun the whole way down here. And yeah. You get here and relax, and we're just like we're just chilling, right? I mean, I mean, don't get us wrong. Don't bring your stock Pathfinder. No. But <laughs> Well, I mean, a Renegade did it, right? It's got yeah. the trailated badge on it. Yeah. But you're stacking a lot of yeah. rocks. Yeah, for sure. They were. I guarantee you they were stacking a lot of rocks with the Renegade. Yeah. <laughs> but, but. And doing some bypasses. I but, guess what yeah. I'm saying is keep the Rubicon Trail on your bucket list. Come to the Rubicon Trail, but just slow down and enjoy it. Open heart, open mind. Yeah, enjoy the features, enjoy the landscape, enjoy the springs. I mean, they're phenomenal. I thought this was just going to be a ridiculous drunken party and it's just not it's not that you know what i mean and that's yeah that's awesome there's a lot of history there's a lot of spots you can just kind of peel back and just like we can we can see like three jeeps i see a, a really sweet cherokee behind me i think there's a zj down yeah. there uh we kind of found a nice secluded spot but there's a five seven hemi jku down there too <laughs> yeah. but come to the rubicon trail stay at the springs for a couple days 
and just enjoy the history. Realize you're not gonna have cell phone service. You're, you're not gonna be able to text home. You're not gonna be able to call I've got the itch, but it's, it's kind of a good thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, Amber, I, I love you. Cool. I, I hope everything's okay. I mean, hug the dog for me. And you're gonna be watching this when I'm home, but. Yeah. But that's, <laughs> that's, that's all I got. But um, I think it's time that we blow up a giant pizza inflatable and, yeah. and get in the springs because yeah. this has been way too serious of a talk for yeah. the last 10 minutes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, root beer is delicious. Yeah, cheers. Absolutely. To, yep. So, cheers. we'll see you in the springs. Grandpa, mm -hmm. tell me about the good old days. I'm telling you, son, last time I come in Rubicon Springs was 1972. <laughs> I was in a flat fender wheelies, and I mean, that thing had no power whatsoever. It was about a 29 inch tire, <laughs> rusty axles. I mean, you really had to work for it. Now these boys got these contraptions, and makes me sick. <laughs>